So this is the speed editor from Blackmagic. I love this bit of kit, this is fantastic. And in this episode, I'm gonna show you some of the cool things that it does. And I'm also gonna show you what works in the color page. So let's go and take a look. So over here on the interface, we've got, uh, we're in the cut page by the way, and we've got several folders here. And what I'm gonna do is first show you how the source tape works. Now, if you're not familiar with source tape, you should check out an episode that I did a few months ago called Source Tape, and there's also an episode on how to use the cut page. So it might be worth looking at those if you're uh, new to the cut page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into one of these. This is all our footage that's in the media page. And if I just go into this one, B-roll, you'll see that I've got three more folders. Now, if I want to view what's in those three folders, all I've got to do is come to the speed editor and literally press source, and that goes into source tape mode. So now I can scroll through that, and I'm having a look at all the footage that's in those three folders. Now, what I can do, you'll see that's updating on the, um, on the interface as well. So if I go right forward here, and I'm now in the folder called Ride to Work. Now, if I just want to see what's in that folder without looking at the other two folders, if you just press source again, it takes you inside just that folder. So you now see that I've got six or seven clips that are just inside that folder. So it means that the scroll wheel and shuttle wheel will behave slightly differently because there's less duration for it to get through. So that's a really cool little trick. Now, if you want to come out of there, just go to S press escape and you're back into viewing all of your footage. Now, to come out of there, just press timeline. And then if I press play now, we're just playing our regular timeline. So this is an edit. We're halfway through this edit. So we can scroll through, we can shuttle through. This is really cool stuff. And what I want to do is just place a marker. So let's just place a marker, let's say here. And to do that, if you go to where it says audio level, but if you double click it, that adds a marker. Now, if I just go forward a little bit more, and if I double click it, but this time I'm going to use the jog wheel to select a new color marker. So this is really good. So you just double click and hold. So let's put a purple one down. And if I play that for even further, let's say we want to put a marker here. If I triple click, up comes the marker dialog box. So what you can do now is either type in a new name or maybe I want to give it a marker duration or just add some notes. So that's a really quick way of accessing markers, but via the speed editor. Now, when you're in jog mode, if you press snap on here, what happens is as you get to an edit point, the jog wheel stops momentarily. So you can see that I'm still moving the jog wheel, but it's stuck on the edit point for me. So it snaps to the edit point and it also snaps to markers. So if I just go back a little bit more, you see that I get a little bit of play in the jog wheel while it holds onto that marker. So that's a really good way of just snapping to objects that you might want to. If I double click the snap and hold it, the jog wheel actually updates my interface. So I can make the screen larger or smaller just using the speed editor. So again, that's a really cool little trick there. The speed editor itself, it runs off USB-C or Bluetooth. Now I've been using it for a few days now and I have no idea how long the batteries actually last on this because I haven't actually run them out yet. So to check what the battery life is, if you go up to your preferences and if you go to your system and go to control panels, you see the battery level there. So I'm still at 79%. So these have obviously got a healthy battery life on them. If I now press play, So if I wanted to add an edit point there, what you can do is just press split. And that puts an edit point in the point where you are. So let me just go back and show you. And there you can see the split. Now if I go to, I'm in snap mode and jog mode. So I'm lined up on there now. If I want to rejoin that split that I've made, just press it again. And there you see I've, the split has now become a join. If I just scroll back here to my title, there, if you press the title, so if I double click here and hold, what I can actually do is jog through all my different fonts. So again, this is a really quick way of just updating that on, or just browsing what fonts you've got on your system. And if I come further back here, we've got some transitions here, okay? So what I can do is I can change the duration of those transitions by just pressing transition duration and then using my jog wheel. Now, if I wanted to set that as the preset, all I've got to do then is double click. And that is now the new default transition preset. So just before we take a look at the speed editor in the color page, please consider subscribing. I haven't asked for quite a few episodes now, and it would mean a lot to me if you would subscribe and hit the thumbs up for me. Let's go and take a look at the speed editor in the color page.
So I'm gonna to switch to the color page and talk you through which functions work on here. Now, obviously things like camera cutting and trimming and the actual editing functions are not gonna work in the color page. There's no reason for them to work in the color page, but a fair few of the keys do actually work. So straight away, you've got your stop and play and your jogs work. So the, the, you've got the jog and shuttle and scroll. They all work perfectly well. And you also have in here the full view. So I can go into full view and back again. Uh, in and out work. Not quite sure what you'd need those for, but they work anyway. And also the split clip work. So if you just wanted to split a clip, maybe you wanted to do a uh, cross dissolve on it to uh, do two different color grades. Or you might have a shot where there is an edit that's not been detected. If you've done scene cut detect, for example, then you can use the split. So let me just show you that. So if I just jog back a little bit, if I want to split this clip here, just press split and that's done. And the undo feature works as well. So if I just add a little bit of a grade and then I can just double click here and undo that. The markers work as well. So if I just play that through, you can do a double click here to add a marker. You can't do the marker select using the color wheel thing, uh, but you can triple click and bring up your marker uh, dialog box. Just press escape to get rid of that. So obviously this is designed for the cut page and edit page. This is mostly editing functionality, but there are a few things in there that are just gonna help you a little bit in the color page too.